In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first reading is from Acts chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. 
And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. So with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On that evening, the first night of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to the then he showed him his, their, his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the door was locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. The text for the message this morning is the uh, first reading. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. So far the text. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. I am so mindful, Lord, that I am standing on holy grounds where so many saints before me have preached from. I am a sinful man standing in front of your holy people, Lord. Touch my lips with your spirit so that I may speak your word. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may hear you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings to you from the country of Texas. <laughs> it's a beautiful country. We'll welcome you anytime. And also, Lord, um, I, uh, as I listen to you through your word, I'm also very, very humbled by the opportunity I have in this place this morning. I always sat there, never stood here. I finally made it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's the full number of those who believe were of one heart and soul. The Greek word says soul, and the Tigrinya word, that's an Eritrean language, says Nefsi, it comes from the Hebrew word nefesh. So really in this word it talks about the physical being and he said all of them were together and no one lacked of anything. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not going to preach about economic policies today, but I'm going to talk about the Christian policy, which is about caring for one another. And the other thing is, it talks about the soul, and he says, the full number of those who believed. How did they believe? We just read the gospel lesson, we know, and what Thomas said, unless they, I touch the marks of the nails and the wound on his side, I would not believe. And do you know what he did when he touched his once, my Lord and my God. That's the confession, isn't it? You see, for a Hebrew who was doubting, and all these years he told them who he is, that he would die and rise again on the third day, that he would see them in Galilee, oh, they didn't get it. They didn't. And then he had to see a proof that he was the Christ who was dead and now alive. Amen. And once he touched his hands, he said, my Lord and my God. Why is this important this morning? On a day when we are really gathered here with the Black Clergy Caucus. I think some of you, this might be the most black pastors you have ever seen together in one room. <laughs> and you know, it's a wonderful thing. I just want you to know, in Texas, when I preach, I tell them, if you don't like me now, get used to it. <laughs> because you will spend eternity with me. And this morning, this is a glimpse of heaven. Where are the Hispanics? Oh, they are in St. Louis. Get them here. <laughs> Where are the Asians? They might be at Irvine in California. Get them here. All of them are welcome. And do you know that when the day comes that we will not be identified by the color of our skin, but by who we are as Christians? Then we have made it. We have arrived. We really did arrive at that moment. And I have to tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is where it begins. 
Because what you preach as a pastor to your congregation is going to determine how they see the church operating in the world that is in darkness. I have to tell you right now, I am mentoring about four people that are going to become pastors. In retirement, by the way. Four people. Well, you could do better. But the reason I'm saying this is, the statistics are stacked against us these days. I know when I was in college in Bronxville, New York, my classmates said that the church will be extinct in a generation. An African immigrant with broken English would say, the church will not die, you will die before the church dies. Because the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That is why we are here. That's why we are here. Getting ready. The army is getting prepared for the war. It is a battle against the principalities of, the, um, of this world. And do you know who wins at the end? It is the Christ. And do you know what happened on that, on that cross? Don't you know? It, Christ was crucified. I mean, he was suffocated to death. And what the devil was doing was he was dancing the African dance. And Jesus says, it is finished. He thought that Jesus was finished. But on the third day, the head of the devil was crushed once and for all. You see here, it talks about the disciples having all things in common and there was no one who was lacking. But what he is talking about is the disciples was giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace <coughs> went upon them all. I have to tell you, we are not preaching social gospel. We are preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why I have a great respect for our professors who have dedicated their lives to teaching us what the gospel means. I know we are critical. Some of the classes were very hard. Dr. McKenzie, I remember the history class. I mean, they were tough. But they prepared us well. And thank God for them. So we have to be thankful for the gifts that this church has. I have to tell you, every denomination would envy what we have. Because it's a good stuff. Really good. So we have everything that God has given us. Grace upon grace. Yes. And what we need to do is be faithful. Yes. Be very faithful. And you know, one thing that I have to tell you is, as an African immigrant who started in this denomination almost 40 years ago, 1983 is when I came, we have seen so many turmoils in Africa. I have to tell you, when Mechanius was divided, our pastors had a big role to play in the reconciliation of the church. When the Eritreans started meeting here and the English district was a very vital part of this movement, the Eritreans, there were two Lutheran churches and the unity began here. Missouri, don't get divided, be united. Let's go together. There is no one against the other, but we are united. All the full members of those who believe, it says, we're one in heart and in soul. One in heart and in soul. Why couldn't it be true in our own church body? One in heart and in soul. When we are united, we are not preaching only the gospel only by word, but we will preach the gospel by who we are. 
people will see the unity of the church and as a result they will come to thank God for what we have so brothers and sisters in Christ for me it is a great honor and a great privilege to be in this place and to talk about what is deep in my heart which is the unity of the church I am mindful I am preaching to Germans by the way and uh, time is important and I was told eight to ten minutes and I don't want to go a minute before uh, <laughs> over ten minutes otherwise I'll get reprimanded <laughs> so suffice it to say we are one church never forget that Amen. May the peace of God that passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Believe in one God. Let us pray for the church and all the people according to their needs. For the mission of the church to make known among the nations the joy of the resurrection of Christ, that life in his name may reach the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the continued joy and dedication among all those in our synod's Black Clergy Caucus that their service on behalf of God's people would be filled with joy and commitment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation and those duly appointed to govern it, that our leaders would serve with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, that God would cause peace to break out where there is death and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a resurgence of virtue among us and throughout our land, that love, joy, peace, patience, and all the fruits of the Spirit would everywhere abound, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and grieving, that the good cheer of Jesus' resurrection would lift up their hearts and grant them an assurance in their time of trouble. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who commune at this altar this day, that the bounty of the Lamb's high feast would be received to the true joy, and that our forgiving Savior would strengthen our faith and increase our love for Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Being assured of your good favor, dear Father, by the resurrection of your beloved Son from the dead, 
We present our prayers to you as we seek your mercy and your good and gracious will. For you live and reign with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin 
and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. awarding of two degrees to two individuals this morning, degrees that would ordinarily be awarded at commencement on May 17th. These degrees are being awarded today because both individuals receiving degrees are well-known and close friends of the many guests on campus this week for the Black, the LCMS Black Clergy Caucus. We are very thankful to have all of you with us so that as we honor these two pastors. The first degree to be awarded today is the Master of Arts in Pastoral Studies to the Reverend Aubrey Watson of New Orleans, Louisiana. When Reverend Watson completed his extensive coursework for pastoral ministry through Concordia Theological Seminary's distance education leading to ordination program from 1996 to 2002, and Dr. Rast and I remember it well. We were young professors and having those sweeps through the South to, to teach these classes, we remember those well. At that time, that program was known short as DELTO. Our accreditation did not allow us to award degrees for a distance education program. But as we all have known, that's changed in recent years with accreditation. So now Reverend Watson's prior bachelor's degree and his Delta coursework qualify him to be awarded our Master of Arts in Pastoral Studies degree. President Rast, as provost, I hereby certify that based upon prior coursework, Aubrey Watson has satisfactorily completed the requirements for this degree prescribed by the faculty and the Board of Regents of Concordia Theological Seminary. I present him here to you by authorization of the faculty to be awarded the degree of Master of Arts in Pastoral Studies. Upon authorization of the faculty with the concurrence of the Board of Regents, I, as president of Concordia Theological Seminary, hereby confer upon Aubrey Watson the degree of Master of Arts in Pastoral Studies with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto.
The second degree to be awarded today is the Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa to the Reverend James Wigan Sr. of Pensacola, Florida. Because he is not able to be with us today, we are blessed to have his son, the Reverend Stephen Wiggins Sr., with us to receive this degree on behalf of his father. James Wiggins Sr., a native of Camden, Alabama, where he received is a native of Camden, Alabama, where he received his elementary education in the Lutheran schools of Wilcox County. His Christian faith and life continue to be nurtured at the Alabama Lutheran Academy and College in Selma, completing high school there in 1951. He continued on to college at Emanuel Lutheran College in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he earned a bachelor's degree in 1955. He stayed in Greensboro, graduating from Emanuel Lutheran Theological Seminary in 1959. He also took extension courses from Concordia Theological Seminary when it was in Springfield, Illinois, and graduate courses in sociology at Miles College in Birmingham, Alabama. Pastor James Wiggins Sr. spent his entire pastoral ministry faithfully serving congregations in Alabama at Buena Vista, Hybert, Sedan, Vierredenboro, Oak Hill, Bessemer, and Montgomery. He also provided leadership in the Southern District of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod as a circuit counselor, a mission committee member, circuit youth ed pastoral advisor, member of the Commission on Adjudication, treasurer of the district's Black Churchmen Conference, and chairman of the Rosebud Memorial Project. He retired from pastoral ministry in 1995, moving to Pensacola, Florida, where he continues to be a faithful member of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. He and his beloved wife, Katie, who is now with the Lord, were blessed with four children, the late Reverend James Wiggins, Jr., the Reverend Stephen Wiggins, Sr., Felicia Thornton, and Karen Wiggins, as well as nine grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Like Dr. Rosa Young, he has influenced numerous men and women to pursue service to the Lord as Lutheran pastors and teachers, at our count, at least 10 pastors and 12 teachers, including some present here today. He's very much of a spiritual father among our black clergy. Like Dr. Rosa Young, who was awarded an honorary doctoral degree by Concordia Theological Seminary in 1961, it is only fitting that the Reverend James Wiggins Sr. also be honored by this seminary through the awarding of an honorary doctoral degree. President Rast, for his faithful and powerful witness to our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, as a parish pastor of Alabama congregations of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, for several decades, for his exemplary service to the Southern District of the Missouri Synod, and for inspiring several men and women to become Lutheran pastors and teachers of the Missouri Synod, the faculty of Concordia Theological Seminary, with the concurrence of the Board of Regents, recommends James Wiggins Sr. to receive the degree of Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa. As president of Concordia Theological Seminary and upon the recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Regents concurrence, it is my joyful privilege to confer the degree of Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto upon James Wiggins Sr.
behalf of Concordia Theological Seminary, I extend a very warm welcome to all those present for the meeting of the Black Clergy Caucus of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod here on campus this week. We have been blessed to have many of you as students here, so welcome home. I, I want especially to acknowledge the members of the Black Clergy Caucus Executive Committee. So if you would please stand as I call your name and remain standing, we'll reserve applause until all have been named. President, Reverend Dr. S.T. Williams. Right, Vice President, Reverend Stephen Wiggins. Secretary, Reverend Micah Glenn. Assistant Secretary, Reverend Perry McCollum. Treasurer, Reverend Prentice Marsh. Chaplain, Reverend Gregory Manning. Advisors, Reverend Dr. Roosevelt Gray, Reverend Meredith Jackson, Reverend Amos Gray, Reverend Dr. Martin Lee, and Reverend Dr. Victor Belton. Please join me. allow me to encourage you all, including our students, to make your way now to Sealer Auditorium for coffee, as well as a convocation on black ministry that will begin there shortly. God bless you all, and have a blessed day.